blocks made, we have to make the corner braces. Now they're essentially the same thing, except we can't make them square. We have to make a 45 degree angle on the one corner. The reason why is if we left it square, we're not gonna be able to get this bracket for the pinball leg in and being able to bolt up properly. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So when you go to install your pinball legs, you're gonna have this bracket on the inside and it's going to get screwed with six screws to the inside of the cabinet. Now this area here is where we have to make that brace so that we can have some glue strength to keep this corner nice and strong. But you can see if we leave this square, it's not gonna fit in there. So the one corner has to have a 45 degree angle. Now in order to get this to fit and have kind of the maximum amount of glue space, you're gonna want these edges here to be one and one eighth inch and no bigger. They could be a touch smaller than that, but um, if you make them too small, then you're losing some glue strength. First step is to figure out how long you want these corner braces to be. So on the front panel, you gotta remember that I have an inch spacing underneath the cab to the bottom, and then the thickness of the plywood is three quarter. So really up to an inch and three quarters is where this is gonna start for the brace. And then I don't want it to go past and start interfering with these buttons at all. So for me, I'm gonna stop at six inches and I would highly recommend you don't go less than six inches. That way you get the most strength you can. So I need two of those. And then on the back cabinet, I don't have any buttons to worry about, but I still have the um, inch gap plus the three quarter inch plywood for the bottom of the cabinet. So that's putting me at 20, and a half. So I'm gonna make two 20 and a halfs for that side. So then taking a two by four, just measure out the pieces you want. So I've got one at 20 and a half. And then rather than make two six inch ones, which are really quite kind of short and a little bit sketchy on the table saw, I could always make it longer and then just cut it up after. So instead of two six inch ones, I will just make it like 12 and a half and always cut it down. Then go ahead and clamp your material to your table and cut this with a circular saw or a jigsaw. your table saw you're going to want to extend the saw blade up out of the top probably about two inches so in this saw it's this one here you kind of have to push it in until it locks and then clockwise is to go up and then we're going to want to tilt this at 45 degrees so in this saw's case it's a clamp right here undo it swing it all the way back till this pointer lines up with 45 degrees and give it a clamp now on the end of one of your pieces, you're gonna kind of figure out that, okay, this is gonna be sitting on the top of the table saw. This is gonna sit against the fence. So that means we're gonna be roughly making some kind of angle like this on the end. So what we're gonna do is measure really accurately from the corner over about an inch and a 16th, no more than an inch and an eighth. I'd probably go closer to one and one 16th. So I'll just use a tape measure and make a mark. There we go. Now this is the mark we're gonna line up with our angled saw blade on the edge that it's going to leave. And uh, then we'll take a cut and see what that looks like. Then take your material and stick it against the fence, unlock the fence and start moving it over. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna move the fence over so that the edge of this tooth on this side is cutting through that line there. So that looks about right like that. I kind of eyeball it in line with the saw blade. So I'm gonna lock that down and then we'll give this a try. Then I'm gonna explain what I'm doing here so that you understand what's up before I start and you can't hear me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the material against the fence, start the cut until the blade has kind of come up through the top. And then if I go back like this, there's a chance of kickback where the blade kind of kicks it back at me. So don't be standing right behind it. Uh, another safer thing is get it to cut up to the edge, hold it in place and then reach down with your other hand or even your knee and shut the machine down, let it come to a stop, and then you can remove it. And where the cut is, we can measure and see if that's what we like. If we like it, great, turn it back on, push it through. If it's off a bit, we can adjust it before we cut through our entire piece. There's our cut in the end of the piece here. So if we line this up with our tape measure, we're exactly one inch and one sixteenth. So that's perfect, that's what we're shooting for so we can run all our pieces through. Now, if yours is a bit off, it's really simple. If this is too small, then that means you need to put the fence a little bit closer to the blade so that more of this is sticking out and it'll be bigger, or the opposite if it is too big of a piece.
So if we put the pinball leg brackets in right into the corner where they're gonna sit and we take our corner brace, look at that, that fits perfect. Man, I couldn't ask for anything better. Lots of strength in there, this'll be great.